When Elon Musk founded SpaceX in 2002, its mission was to provide reliable and affordable means of carrying payloads into space. Although it certainly has achieved this goal, the company has done so much more than just that. Hidden away in a Texan hangar is a brand new rocket engine that will take us to Mars, help us explore the moon, and even dominate the aviation industry. But how superior exactly is this engine? The SpaceX Raptor is a cryogenic staged combustion rocket engine intended to power the high performance lower and upper stages for the Mars bound rocket Starship. It has more than three times the thrust of SpaceX's Merlin 1D engines propelling the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets and steps away from a kerosene-based propellant. Raptor consumes a combination of liquid methane and liquid oxygen in a full-flow staged combustion cycle. The highly reusable engine makes use of concepts first demonstrated on the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets, including deep cryogenics, cooled below their boiling point to increase their density, and thus load the limited tank volume with a greater mass of propellant. Like SpaceX's Merlin engines, at least two versions of Raptor will be available. One for use on the first stage booster of the Starship launch vehicle, and one optimized for operation in vacuum, for operation outside Earth's atmosphere, for the interplanetary insertion, and in the ambient Martian atmosphere for retro propulsion ahead of landing. Raptor's design was revealed in September of 2016 during an address given by Elon Musk at the International Astronautical Congress, outlining SpaceX's Mars transport architecture. Known as the first version of the Raptor family, Raptor 1 uses methane and liquid oxygen fuels, making it one of the cleanest burning rockets available. While Raptor 1 has been refined over the years, it is now an obsolete design. Its construction is complex, difficult to manufacture, and has a long turnaround between launches. It also has hit a thrust ceiling of 185 tons, meaning it will struggle to reach Musk's demands for a Mars-bound starship. SpaceX's solution then would be the Raptor 2, an engine capable of taking us to Mars and even beyond. This isn't just an updated Raptor 1, but an entirely new design from the ground up that can outstrip its predecessor in every metric. Compared to the original Raptor, Raptor 2 looks borderline incomplete. A large amount of plumbing and sensors have been removed, transitioning the engine from a Christmas tree look to a significantly cleaner look. In that way, SpaceX has made the engine more flame and heat proof. A clear step towards SpaceX's goal of removing all engine shrouding from the booster, which would decrease the booster's mass by around 6 tons. This is a clear example of Musk's the best part is no part mantra. Another change made to Raptor 2 to further decrease the engine's mass is the removal of the torch igniters in the main combustion chamber. Instead of relying on redundant torch lighters, the well-mixed hot oxygen gas and hot methane gas act hypergolic under the high temperature and pressure of the main combustion chamber. The most the most fundamental change was opening the throat, allowing more propellant to flow through the engine and increasing thrust. Raptor 2's MCC pressure is an astounding 300 bar, up 50 bar from Raptor 1, and is the highest MCC pressure of any rocket engine ever. The previous record for the highest MCC pressure was the Russian RD-180, which runs at 267 bar. Due to the wider throat and increased chamber pressure, Raptor has gained a significant amount of thrust. Raptor 1 produced 185 tons of thrust, while Raptor 2 produces 230 tons. The current peak thrust of Raptor 2 operates at 247 tons. So SpaceX is confident 250 tons will be achieved. In comparison, the best Russian engine, which is the RD-180, generates 386 tons of sea level thrust, but has two combustion chambers and two nozzles. On the other hand, what's maybe just as important when designing a rocket is the thrust to weight ratio, or how heavy the engine is compared to how much thrust it produces. 
A higher thrust-to-weight engine ultimately means less dead weight the engine needs to lug around. The RD-180 is at 78 to 1. The Raptor, however, takes the lead and is better here with an astonishing 200 to 1 thrust-to-weight ratio, which is unbelievable. But of course, we have to believe it. And not only that, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk shocked the entire space industry when revealing the production rate of the Raptor engines. We're close to achieving um, one ra a Raptor to uh, every day production rate, so sort of seven a week, um, which is, is tough for a complex engine. Um, and uh, I think by the end of this year, we'll be able to produce a shipment of booster per month. Can you imagine that? A booster per month? Only SpaceX would dare to make such a claim, but we're still waiting for the 1,000 Starship fleet anyway, so let's just all be carefree about this. And although the speed of Russian missile production is unknown, we're very sure it cannot pass this 24-hour mark. ULA doesn't even have any competitive edge, competitive edge over SpaceX in this aspect, as it has never attempted to develop a rocket engine since 2006, and now it's simply too late. In short, SpaceX is in a league of its own. And what's even more surprising is when you take a look at the price tag. Raptor 2 is a major improvement in simplification. Elon Musk noted that the cost per Raptor 2 has gone down to only half of what the cost of one Raptor 1 previously was. The long-term goal is an engine cost below 250,000 US dollars. Well, the most expensive engine is the RS-25, which has a sticker price of over $50 million per engine. Yikes. Then we've got the F1 engine, which was 30 million, then the RD-180, which is 25 million, the BE-4 at 16, and we have the Merlin engine, which is less than a million. The cost is one thing, but another strong consideration for the cost of the engine is whether or not it's reusable. And here, the RD-180 is not reusable, or at least never reused, which is different from Raptors, which will all be reused up to 50 flights. All in all, SpaceX's Raptor truly is an engineering masterpiece that is really thrilling the minds of scientists. If all goes well, next month SpaceX will launch the largest rocket in human history. And if it's successful, Starship, as Musk said, will enable a quantum leap in deep space and planetary science. But how? For scientists, there are always more questions than answers. And there are always many more missions they want to fly than funds available to them. The ubiquity of water on the moon has only heightened scientists' desire to get robots out into the solar system to definitely find ice deposits and subsurface oceans to characterize them. Just as we're learning that the solar system holds far more secrets than we might have imagined, we come to find that our inability to fly out there and unlock them especially frustrating. But let me ask you this, what if we could? Some planetary scientists have started warming up to the idea that SpaceX's new Starship rocket, with its unprecedented lift capabilities and potentially paradigm-shattering low costs, could open up the solar system to a new era of exploration. Imagine sending a lander to Europa, which harbors a vast, warm subsurface ocean. Such an amazing scene. During recent NASA planning meetings, Scientists contemplated sending a complex spacecraft costing billions of dollars to conduct science on Europa. At best, they were hoping to land a payload of science instruments about the size and mass of a mini refrigerator there. With Starship, by contrast, NASA might land a cache of scientific payloads the size of a single-story unfinished house. As planetary scientist Jennifer Heldman said, you can really take advantage of the Starship architecture and get to the outer solar system in ways we haven't thought about before. Then she concluded that it could provide a revolutionary new way of exploring these worlds. But why has she come to such a conclusion? Starship is designed to be not just large, but cheap to launch, whereas agencies like NASA and ESA must carefully choose a smattering of missions to fund, with launch costs in the tens of hundreds of millions of dollars, Starship's affordability 
as low as $2 million per launch could open the door to many more. And what's more, Starship has a key advantage over other super heavy lift rockets in development, such as NASA's much delayed space launch system and Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket. The upper half of the rocket is designed to be refueled in Earth orbit by other starships, so more of its lifting capability can be handed over to scientific equipment rather than the fuel. Taking humans to the moon, for example, might require eight separate launches, with each consecutive tanker starship bringing up fuel to the lunar starship that then makes its way to the moon with scientific equipment and crew. Scientists are now starting to dream of what Starship might let them do. Earlier this year, a white paper was published with Heldman as the lead author, titled Accelerating Martian and Lunar Science Through SpaceX Starship Missions. Starship's key differentiator is mass, which means Starship could carry full-sized equipment from Earth, no need to miniaturize it to fit in a smaller vehicle as was required for the Apollo missions to the moon. In short, it's a complete game changer. Because Starship can take off from other worlds in addition to landing on them, it could completely transform a Martian sample return mission. Instead of being able to bring a few kilograms of rocks as NASA intended, Starship might be able to return two metric tons. Brown University's James Head who helped NASA select Apollo landing sites in the 1960s and trained the astronauts who landed there, enthusiastically signed the white paper and said he appreciates that SpaceX has a compelling vision and is diligently working toward that goal. At SpaceX's headquarters in Hawthorne, California, Head said he saw the kind of youth, energy, and determination that propelled the Apollo program. Being on the floor of the SpaceX factory is the closest I've felt to having been in the Apollo program, Head said. Starship could also enable more extravagant missions to other locations, either via a direct launch from Earth or perhaps by using the Moon and Mars as refueling stations, an ambitious future envisioned by Musk. One idea from an international group of scientists called CONEX, or Conceptual Exploration Research, is a spacecraft called Arcanum, which would make use of Starship's heavy lifting capabilities to explore Neptune and its largest moon, Triton. Neptune has been visited only once, a flying visit by NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft in 1989, and there is so much we still don't know about it. As James McKevitt, a researcher at the University of Vienna and the co-lead of Konex said, Nobody's really thinking on this next level about what Starship could enable. Other ideas are even more speculative. Philip Lubin, a physicist from the University of California, Santa Barbara, calculated that a large enough rocket such as Starship could be used to prevent an asteroid from hitting Earth. Such a mission could carry enough explosives to rip apart an asteroid as large as the 10 kilometer wide rock that wiped out the dinosaurs. Its fragments would harmlessly burn up in the atmosphere before they had a chance to reach our planet. Starship could also be a better way to launch giant space telescopes that can observe the universe. Currently, equipment such as NASA and ESA's upcoming James Webb Space Telescope must be launched folded up an expensive, complex, and delicate procedure that could be prone to error. NASA has suggested that a proposed super telescope called LUVOIR, designed to image Earth-like planets around other stars, could launch on Starship. While Musk has said SpaceX is already working on an interesting project, which is to have a really big telescope taking a lens that was intended for a ground-based telescope and creating a space-based telescope with it. Elsewhere, some scientists have dreamed of using Starship to prepare to visit other stars. Rene Heller from the Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research in Germany and colleagues say that Starship could offer a low-cost way to test technologies for a spacecraft that can travel multiple light years to neighboring star systems. Starship could release a sail-powered spacecraft on a trip to Mars, which would use an onboard laser to push against a thin sail and reach incredible speeds. 
enabling a demonstration to be conducted beyond Earth's orbit. Then, we should be able to follow its acceleration and path through the solar system for a few days and almost to the orbit of Jupiter. Musk suggested that SpaceX could launch as many as a dozen Starship test flights in 2022, with missions to the Moon and Mars both on the horizon, and plenty of scientific potential to boot. Or as Musk puts it, it's really whatever you can imagine. NASA wants to use it to land American astronauts on the moon. The Pentagon wants to use it to whisk military cargo around the world in minutes. Astronomers, satellite companies, and aspiring space tourists are eyeing its potential to drastically slash the cost of getting to space. Elon Musk says it is the holy grail of space technology and sees it as crucial to his ultimate goal of colonizing Mars. It is called Starship, and for SpaceX, Musk's private space company, it's the future. Its success or failure may determine whether the company achieves his dreams. Interestingly enough, as SpaceX continues ground tests of its Starship Super Heavy rocket ship in preparation for its first orbital flight, scientists have finally revealed the great potential of Starship that could change the space industry forever. SpaceX's workhorse rocket, the 70-meter-tall Falcon 9, has already shaken up the aerospace business. With that rocket, SpaceX pioneered reusability, employing retro rockets and steerable fins to guide the first stage to a landing after it re-enters the atmosphere. Today, SpaceX routinely slaps on a fresh coat of paint and launches it again. In June, the company flew one of these flight-tested stages a record 13th time. Another record is on the horizon. The company is on track to launch more than 50 Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets this year, or about one per week on average. The dependable reuse and rapid launch cadence are two of the reasons why SpaceX can charge $67 million for a Falcon 9 launch, much less than its competitors. But Musk doesn't want to stop there. This man wants to dream bigger dreams. As a result, Starship was born. The body of the rocket is stainless steel, heavier than the aluminum alloys of most rockets, but cheaper and more easily manufactured. The 33 Raptor 2 engines crammed into the back end of Super Heavy burn methane rather than the traditional kerosene-based rocket fuels. Not only because it's cheaper, but also because it could be harvested on Mars by combining CO2 and water. The booster is designed to return to the launch pad after its six-minute ride. The company believes it can be refueled and ready to relaunch in an hour. Starship is also reusable. The goal is to be able to launch each vehicle three times a day. Once in orbit, a loaded Starship could be gassed up by a tanker version of the vehicle, enabling it to take its 100 tons of payload onto the moon or Mars. At the February event, Musk explained how a single Starship launching three times per week would lift more than 15,000 tons to orbit in a year, about as much as all the cargo that has been lifted in the entire history of spaceflight. Musk has claimed the price of each launch might actually be as low as 1 million US dollars, or $10 per kilogram to low Earth orbit. The only rocket close to Starship in its capabilities is NASA's Space Launch System, or otherwise known as the SLS, set to fly for the first time this month. Earlier this year, the agency's auditor found each launch would cost about 4 billion US dollars or nearly $60,000 per kilogram. When SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk talks up Starship, it's mostly about human exploration. Set up bases on Mars and make humans a multi-planetary species. Save civilization from extinction. World-renowned physicist Dr. Michio Kaku shares his opinion. As an insurance policy, we have to make sure that, that humans become a two-planet species. And now, of course, Elon Musk has revived this vision by talking about a multi-planet species. Even Neil deGrasse Tyson, who calls himself one of SpaceX's biggest critics, also believes that Musk's SpaceX orbit project has more merit and has a higher chance of going beyond suborbital flight. The concept of SpaceX is, we want to send people to places it is an effort to push that limit, that frontier, of exploring space. SpaceX could fly bigger and heavier instruments more often, and much more cheaply, if SpaceX's projections of $10 per kilogram cargo launch costs are to be believed. 
On Mars, they could deploy rovers not as one-offs but in herds. Space telescopes could grow, and fleets of satellites in low Earth orbit could become commonplace. Astronomy, planetary science, and Earth observation could all boldly go better than they ever have gone before. One mission being considered by Jennifer Heldman, a scientist at NASA Ames, is a sample return from the moon. A starship would land on the moon, fill its hold with lunar ice that would be kept chilled, and then return it to Earth for scientists to study. Researchers could discover much about how the ice was deposited over billions of years and where it is abundant and available for a future lunar base. Daniel Baker, director of the Laboratory for Atmospheric and Space Physics at the University of Colorado Boulder, suggests that Starship could carry a probe to Mercury, a tough planet to reach because of the need for extra fuel and shielding against the sun. Starship could also send a massive probe into interstellar space, perhaps passing by some of the outer planets along the way, like the Voyager probes did. The massive rocket could also launch space-based telescopes that would dwarf both the Hubble and the James Webb. The Starship could also launch a series of landers directed towards some of the most interesting moons of the outer planets. For example, NASA has been studying a Europa lander as a follow-up to the Europa Clipper. Europa, a moon of Jupiter, is thought to have a subsurface ocean covered by a layer of ice that might be warm enough to contain extraterrestrial life. Saturn's moons Titan and Enceladus are also possible targets for landers. Enceladus is an ice-covered world similar to Europa. Titan is a weird world with liquid methane seas. NASA is studying a mission that would put a submarine into one of those seas, the Kraken Mare. The humans versus robots argument has been raging among space policy experts since the beginning of the space age. As Scientific American notes, robots can explore the moons and planets far more cheaply than astronauts who need expensive life support systems to sustain them. However, astronauts are far more capable than robots in running experiments and doing field exploration using the advantage of human flexibility, experience, and judgment. SpaceX's Starship, however, may provide a solution to the humans versus robots problem by enabling both. Humans will return to the lunar surface on a human landing system, Starship. Musk dreams of using the Starship to build a colony on Mars. The Starship will also enable a number of planetary missions that have so far been too expensive and too big to fit into existing rockets. Everyone wins. SpaceX has already proven the virtues of reusable rockets with the Falcon 9 and Heavy, which have taken the lion's share of the launch market. The Starship will follow the principle that reusability plus quick turnaround leads to cheap access to space and therefore more space missions, but on a much larger scale. Thus, once Starship becomes operational, it will help to fulfill the promise of the space age that has been over a century in the making. Are you as hyped up as I am about the Starship? Because you should be. I love it. But not as much as I love you for staying here till the end. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. Bye!